Hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Inezalea, and today it's another Filmmaking Friday. So in this Filmmaking Friday, I will be showing you how to create some really cool glowing neon footsteps in Adobe After Effects. Just like in the preview you saw, it's a really cool effect that you see in a ton of music videos, and it just got me intrigued. I tried to experiment with a few techniques, uh, none of them worked until the last one. So first I experimented with the 3D camera tracker from Adobe After Effects, which didn't give me good results because of the reflections in the floor so that's not a right way on doing that then I tried to use uh, mocha to track the entire floor which is also not a good solution uh, it didn't really track them very well because it's a 3d kind of movement but then at the end of trying everything I came to this technique also using mocha which is a tracking software that comes with after effects so if you do have after effects you will have mocha if you don't know that uh, it should be in there integrated so yeah we're going to be using that in combination with after effects in in order to create these results. All right, so if you want to use files to test it on, I actually provided you a link to download in the description below. It's completely for free. So you can test out this technique with the same exact footage that I'm using. So you can follow along with this tutorial. And if you enjoy watching this video, be sure to give it a like. Also subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bar so you get notified when I upload new videos. That would be a great help. And without further ado, let's jump into Adobe After Effects. All right, so here we are in Adobe After Effects and I have my original footage right here. So um, this you can download in the description below. And as you can see right here, the ground is very reflective. So we see the lights and they're actually moving in the reflections because of the depth. Uh, we do have some things that we can use to analyze this footage with a simple 3D camera tracker, uh, which you have in After Effects tracking uh, and you click on your footage. Uh, that won't work in this case uh, because of all the reflections and you could mask out these reflections but then you have uh, these reflections over here so it gets really really hard with a simple 3d camera tracker so in some occasions uh, this solution could work uh, but anyway I found a better way to be 100% sure the track is perfect so um, what we'll do is drag this footage into a new composition and as you can see um, we are going to check out our footage and you can right click on your footage, go to interpret footage main. We can see it's 24 frames per second. That's actually very important in a second. Um, but yeah, we're going to cancel that for now. We have an MP4 video file, but one problem is if we're going to send this to Mocha, which is a tracking software uh, that comes in, uh, well, comes with Adobe After Effects, you can go to animation and then click on track in Mocha AE. Uh, if you're going to click that in some, uh, well, sometimes it doesn't work with a video file. So it's very important that you first export this video file uh, as an image sequence and then re-import that video file as an image sequence with 24 frames per second. So if you're not following, just uh, do as I do. So you click on your video footage and go to composition and add to render queue, not to Adobe Media Encoder, to render queue. Actually, it could work in Media Encoder as well, but I'm just trying to save some time and stay within After Effects. So right here, we are going to select our JPEG and we're just going to jump quickly in the JPEG function. Uh, for me, it automatically checks on resize. I don't want to do that. So I'm not resizing my footage and I'm going to click OK. Then I'm going to click here on the output to find my destination folder, create a new folder and rename this to image sequence. OK, open that folder and just save it over there and then go render. It shouldn't, it shouldn't take too much because it's an image sequence in JPEG format. So as you can see, it's going uh, pretty fast here. Okay, so once the video footage, well, the image sequence is exported, you go right click, import and file. Go to that image sequence, click on the folder and click on the first image. Make sure import JPEG sequence is checked on and then import that. Now you will have imported an image sequence. But as you can see right here, the FPS isn't right. It's 30 FPS. So if we right click interpret footage main, we can see that it's currently set to 30 FPS, which means it's going to play back faster than it should be. So reset that to 24. And then if you click OK, that image sequence will now be 24 frames per second. So drag that on top of your footage and you will see that it's the exact same length. And yeah, there we go. So now click on that footage layer uh, from the image sequence and go to animation, track in Mocha AE. That's going to open up Mocha. And here we go. 
So it's going to recognize that file. It's going to know that it's uh, 200 and th uh, well, 234 frames long. And yeah, everything is going automatically. Just click OK and import that video file. So right over here, I'll go to the first footstep that is just still on the floor uh, until it actually moves up. And then I will go over here to this uh, spline uh, tool over here. And then we can click and just make a small selection. It doesn't have to be too big here. But there we go. Right click once you're done. Maybe make it even smaller. A little bit more like this. Less of the foot because it's actually going to move. And then we want to track it forward. A little bit more like that. Okay, and now we want to track it forward. Once that track is done, we go to export tracking data and go for the second option where the uh, motion blur is supported, then copy to the clipboard, go back to After Effects and go to the beginning of your timeline, right click and create a new null object. This null object we're going to rename to footstep 01 and then go to edit and paste. You will see that all your tracking data is pasted, only the beginning isn't pasted because we didn't start from the beginning with the tracking, so that's no problem. Um, but here we can see that it's perfectly tracked to the floor, so that's exactly what we want. So now we're going to click on our footstep 01 and actually duplicate it a few times, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 for example, we have, uh, well, 7, uh, which is okay. But for the first footstep we're going to drag this into our composition and actually um, if you don't, if it's not long enough, just right click and go to time freeze frame. And then we're going to make it a little bit longer and shift it over to the beginning of uh, where the foot is almost lifting off. And that's over here and we'll drag it over here. And then for the null, we want to do the same thing and shorten that over here. So we have our first footstep. Now what we want to do is actually make it uh, 3D. So if you don't see that, just press F4 on the keyboard and that will shift through these menus. But we want to move it over here, go and make it a 3D layer. Press W on the keyboard to go into the rotation tool and just kind of uh, rotate it to fit to the floor and also resize it in order to fit that foot. Okay, so once you've done that, we can now parent this to our null. So what we want to do is click on this pick whip tool and go to the null. Now it's combined and it should track perfectly to that location on the floor. Okay, so perfect. That's absolutely amazing. One thing we want to do is because there's motion blur in the scene and this footstep is actually perfectly sharp, we want to do a few things here. So we are going to click on the footstep 01, go to effect. Blur and Sharpen, Gaussian Blur, that's uh, the first step that we're going to do, which is over here. Uh, maybe something like 3 or 5 even. Let's go for 5. Now we're going to click on the Motion Blur, enable, enable Motion Blur for that layer, and also enable Motion Blur for the composition. And now we have Motion Blur on that footstep, which is going to integrate a little bit better with our footage. So now we're going to do a second footstep and then I'm going to show you how to design them. So uh, we have the second footstep right over here. What we want to do is go back to Mocha and delete our tracking data. So we're going to just click on that layer over here and click on the trash icon and then we have it over here. So we're going back to our first step, one, and now we have two. So two is about to come. What we'll do is go back to the spline tool and don't select too much, that's really essential. Uh, just select a small part of that area, right click to make your selection and then just drag it forward. And here we do have a mistake because our foot is still included. Uh, so what I'll do is actually uh, redo that quickly and just exclude the foot. So we start over here, go over here, maybe go a little bit around it and there we go. Right click and maybe move this in a little bit more. So it's definitely small enough, maybe move it forward a little bit because it's also still a little part of that uh, of that location. So track it forward, 
let it do its thing and the cool thing is actually uh, the further into your footage that you're going so for example the last foot is going to take less time to track because you're actually always moving uh, further into time so that's also really cool so it doesn't take that much time in total okay so there we go we have the track done Let's go to export tracking data, support motion blur, copy to clipboard, go back to After Effects, and now we wanna create a new null object. So, new null object, and we're going to the beginning of the timeline. It's essential that you go to the beginning of the timeline, Control V or Edit Paste to paste your tracking data, and then go to the next footstep, which is right over here. There we go. And we're going to trim that null all the way over here. Go to the project manager, and then import foot 02. And what you can actually do is just delete this and just click on foot step 01, duplicate that, put it on top, make sure it's not linked anymore, and actually go over here, then link it over here, go to Disnal, and just move it over. And we're going to zoom in a little bit and just rotate it. Like that. Try to get the perspective going. I think we're almost there. It doesn't have to be that perfect, but yeah. The more time you spend on something, usually the better the results. Okay. And here we have a second footstep. We're going to trim this to the same length of the null. Rename that null to footstep 02. And now click on footstep 01 that we duplicated, go to footstep 02 in the composition project manager uh, and then go alt and drag it on top of that footstep 01. That's going to replace that uh, with the exact same settings but now it's composition footstep 02. So that's a simple trick uh, and now we want to parent it again to that null. So if we're going to play this one, again it's tracking perfectly. Okay so we have two footsteps down, uh, let's just continue into masking because now it's just continuing doing the same thing over and over again. Go back to Mocha, track the uh, third foot and then bring it into a null and, and so on and so on. So I'm just going to quickly con um, go to footstep 01, go to the effects and copy the Gaussian blur, paste that on the new footstep and there we go. So now what you want to do is actually mask, mask it out over here because your footstep is actually lifting. Uh, so we're going to click on footstep 01, go to the mask tool and just mask something around it, something like this. And then go to F, subtract 5 maybe. And then press M on the keyboard for the mask path. Click on the stopwatch for the mask path and then move 10 frames forward. Move it over here. Now just go frame by frame and just kind of make this mask fit a little bit according to the foot movement. So right here, we're almost taking off. And I think we're there. So that's footstep 01. Maybe we can trim it a little bit more here. Okay, let's preview. Okay, so there we have a footstep. Okay, so we're just going to do one footstep here because it's yeah basically the same thing. Just look back at this procedure and you have to do that over here and do all the footsteps. So uh, yeah, that's basically it. So now we're going to focus on coloring these footsteps. So I'm going to jump into footstep 01 and I'm going to click on layer 01, go to general, well, effect, generate, fill. And we're going to fill this with, for example, a nice cyan light color and click OK. Then click on the fill, copy, control C, paste it on the second layer and this we're going to make it like a darker blue um, to give some kind of contrast in the color copy that and paste it to layer 3. So go back to the original footage and now we have something like this. We can go to the mode and maybe go for an additive blend mode and go for effects and presets and now I'm going to just add perfect glow which is one of our presets which you can download for free on our website so I will put a link in the description below and uh, just apply that to your layer. And now you have a nice uh, glow to here, so we can lower the threshold maybe. Increase the intensity. And what I want to do as well is go and search for solid composite and just put that on top of the glow. That's just going to make it work better and just make it black. 
I'm also going to the project manager and I'll click on the uh, 16 bits per channel. Make sure you're working in 32. That's going to allow us uh, to work with a little bit more color and it's going to make it look a little bit more pleasing to the eye, the glow. So let's see what we can get here. I think we're almost there. So here we have our first footstep down. Then for the next one, maybe we'll want to go for a yellow orange kind of tone. So we want to jump into that footstep. Again, go to um, effects, generate, fill, and go for a nice yellow. Control copy and paste it. Okay, control copy and paste it over here. So now we have our second footstep. Go back to the original footstep, click on here and just copy the solid composite just until the end of the glow. Copy, control C and then paste it to the footstep over here. Change the blending mode to a screen or an additive. So that's maybe what I did wrong here on this one. I'm going to change it to an uh, screen. The additive is a little bit too intense in my opinion. Uh, but there we go. So now we have a second footstep, which is really, really cool. So. That's basically it for this tutorial. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give this video a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you get notified when I upload new videos. Apart from that, check out our website. We have a bunch to offer for filmmakers, motion graphics artists, and photographers. Uh, so, And if you buy something from our website, it really helps to support this channel. So that would be really awesome. And yeah, hope to see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.